Hello, everybody, and welcome to the In Wheel Time radio, or should I say, internet program. We're so glad that you could join us on this Saturday. From Studio A in Texas, USA, it's the award-winning All Things Automotive Car Talk Show in Wheel Time. Just ahead, a review of our new car of the week, the 2021 Chevrolet Traverse. This Week in Auto History is one of the features we'll have for you. The cruise in calendar, along with the stories making automotive news headlines and a few guests. That and more just ahead on today's In Wheel Time Car Show for Saturday, January 9th, 2021. Boy, we sure wish we could get through all of this stuff that's been going on. Howdy, along with Mike out of this world, Mars, King Conrad DeLong. I'm Don Armstrong, and right off camera over there is Mr. Jeffrey Zekin. So glad that you could join us today. And uh, it is a crisp, clear Saturday morning. I woke up, I had a frost on the windshield again. Did yeah. you? Yeah. Well, apparently there's a big, well, we're under a winter storm watch. Which is pretty major in Houston. For <laughs> it is. Yeah, we, we, everybody freaks out. Yeah, well, we have winter two days at a time, and this is a two-day series coming in here. Uh, apparently, uh, apparently so. Well, we'll wait. Tomorrow looks like a great day for me, sitting on the couch, watching some football, and just kind of uh, tuning out, if you will. Jeff is going to have me shots tonight. Yes. Uh, <laughs> and so I, I'm looking forward to shots. I well, haven't had shots in a while. And if tomorrow is a winter storm, that'll mess up uh, Lucky's Rod Run. Yes, it will. That, that's right. Oh, my. Yeah. You know, that's always such a big event up there. In, uh, I went Ryan. last year. Yep. That's where you had met Jackie Hansen. We'd had him yes, on a couple that's of correct. weeks there's ago. A, there's a year-long planning into that. Oh, very and, much and so. To be, and to be postponed or subject to postpone due to weather, that's, that's incredible. All I can tell you is last year at this time, it was a crisp, all but, well, close to freezing morning and the further we got toward Bryan College Station the colder it got and uh, but once the sun came up it was beautiful and the number of cars just incredible and the the variety of cars yep. um, so many everything from the 1800s to present yeah all the hot rods and everything in custom between. cars mm -hmm. and you've got a classic segment on cars. It, right? hmm? you've got a segment coming up on that don't you yeah well yeah we're going to talk a little bit about it yeah and what do you have to offer uh, <laughs> if we're not supposed to get any snow and ice, how's that? That's good. Over there in Beaumont? <laughs> yeah, it's not and supposed to come over that far. Neaterville. Yeah, we're a little closer to the coast, so it actually... A uh, little closer. Well, a lot closer. Yeah. You're like on the coast. Yeah, so so yeah. a lot of that stuff really doesn't come down quite that far. You, you'll you get it over here, but it's we... It's warmer. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, let's get on with our first guest, shall we? And by the way, we'd like to welcome uh, George Skelton and also John Hobus out at the Hemi Hideout. Thank you guys so much for uh, being with us this morning. We really appreciate it. So our first guest is Mr. Jeff Light, and he is with the Demon Car Club. And Mr. Demons. Martin. Demons. There's multiple of them. Oh. You know, when I, when I saw that on the schedule, I was like, that's an interesting name. We'll have to delve into why the name was you chosen. You thought of me, didn't you? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we did. Hey, Jeff, good morning. Good morning. How are you doing? Hey, uh, good. Hey, that Lucky's Rod Run, this year you have to pre-register and yep. you have to wear a mask. So. And you have to give them your email address yes. for mm -hmm. contact tracing, and that's a requirement if you're going to yeah. go. Uh, they're going to require you to give them uh, contact information before you're allowed in the parking lot, just if there is any contact tracing necessary because of COVID. So a little bit different rules this year. But are you going? We plan on going. Um, like you said, with the weather, that's, that's going to be the next question, whether or not we make the drive out there for it. You know, it's a little so. bit more difficult when you don't have windshield wipers on the car. Yeah, that Rainex does pretty good, and but the visor, but it's it's definitely not ideal. <laughs> yeah, no, no doubt. So, um, yeah. first of all, let me ask you what what kind of car do you have? I have a 1931 Ford Model A, um, kind of high boy setup. Um, it's it's got a Chevy 350 in it, which I know a lot of Ford people don't like that, but <laughs> it uh, works great and. Um, the club built it, which um, which was you know the demons. The demons started in 1957 oh, back wow. in uh, Maplewood, Illinois. Um, they've got um, they had about 10 members back then. Uh, some of the there's I think three surviving members, and I actually got to take one of them for a ride in my car. So that was fun. Um, one of the original members. One of the original members. Yeah. Oh, how cool uh, is that? Yeah, he lives in Dobbin, Texas, and so uh, he comes out to our our events every once in a while so 
Where are you located? Where is the club located? Uh, Houston, but um, because we've got members all over the place. You know, I'm in Cyprus. Um, We built my car in Kingwood um, at uh, Billy Dawson's place. He's got a Dawson's garage. And so the whole club just kind of got together and and went out there and did it. Um, Billy was a big, big part of uh, building my car because we built it from scratch, you know, just from from a body and then um, just went the whole way. I mean, body work, chassis, everything. How long did um, it take and how many guys? um, I think uh, I've got like a list of people that how they helped me and everything. Um, It's about about 12 guys, but it was all based on what who knew what, you know, so like. We had one guy that was, you know, good at welding, which was Billy. Um, we had one guy that was good at, you know, had chopped the cars. So we had like a, um, a party where we all came out and chopped the top three and a half inches and, and you know, re-welded it and cut it, you know, all that stuff. So we had a little event for that. Um, Jeff, was there beer involved in any of I that? I was thinking the same thing. There, <laughs> there's definitely beer involved. Um, <laughs> and barbecue, barbecue is another big thing, too, yeah. so... Um, yeah, I mean, it's it's fun when you make it a club event. Yeah, absolutely. Yes. Well, that's cool when everybody brings their expertise in, in exactly. whatever skill set they have, and not only helps you build your car, but it kind of teaches everybody a little bit yeah, of what, what, I was thinking. what their level of expertise learn is as well. Stuff. Definitely, yeah, because I've always had old cars, but um, I, I've always just kind of bought them and then just tinkered with them. Never built one from the ground up. Luckily, um Danny Verder and uh, Billy Dawson, they, they built ones, um, Model A's from the ground up. So so they were there to help help me do it. And so, I yeah, I definitely learned a whole lot from them. So, Well, uh, how, how old is the car? I mean, like, since, it, since, I, since you rebuilt it. It's a 1931. I got that. <laughs> Thank you. It's 90 years old this year. But, no, um, no, no, no. Thank you. No, thank I, you very much. I think There's that I can do the shot. math with that. But we're talking about the current version of the 31. Okay. Uh, it's about four years old. Uh, we got about 6,000 miles on it. Um, it drives great. I won't, I've never had any problems with it, um, except for, like, um, just minor, like, tweaks in here here and there. But, um, but yeah, I mean, I drive it to Dallas, to the uh, Lafayette, Louisiana for body roundup and Austin and everywhere. It just, just is a beast. So, um, so it, it, the car has been built in the past five years. Mm-hmm. So, you know, is, this isn't an LS motor, just a uh, carbureted no. 350? Yes, sir. Wow. Yeah, Old school. Yeah. So why did you decide to do that instead of with the LS engine? Uh, you know, it's, I wanted to kind of keep it more nostalgic. So, right. you know, out having to go you know to flathead so so you know i wanted it carbureted i wanted it as simple as possible i mean i got very few wires you know what i mean it's like you know any anything that goes wrong with it it's it's really easy to fix totally um, appreciate that totally yeah and then having the chevy 350 you know if i have a problem on the road it's like pretty much any o'reilly's has you know <laughs> yeah, that's parts, right parts for it yeah and, until you go in and the guy behind the counter goes well what kind of car is it it's a 31 ford yeah. what's the oh, engine yeah. in it yeah. <laughs> yeah that's all confusing so uh manual shifted or automatic yeah it's got a t5s um, okay and which is fun you know because for those you have to you know take the um the camaro t5 and put a you know a, a s10 till shaft on it to to get that stick shift up further past the the, the bench seat so um so that was a oh it's got a bench awesome. seat too yes yeah, yeah. yeah. but I, but you know with the bench seat in that car you're still shoulder to shoulder with your neighbor yeah. oh yeah yeah yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah yeah so uh do i mean do you take it are you married i'm not i'm not okay do you have a girlfriend <laughs> tom <laughs> oh, are you looking They're for well, I'm, I'm I'm trying to get to the point of you know. So, what's so funny about that? <laughs> How tall are you? <laughs> what's your sign? <laughs> He's going. Like what did I get on? Yeah. You, you know these the, the, this the the minds of these guys here. Uh, it, it just goes off the rails real easily. So uh, I'm, I'm not trying to hit on you. I'm saying you know. <laughs> I don't know you that well enough yet. <laughs> so, so in uh, in the Demons Car Club, the guys that helped you build this, not just Dawson. Are you changing the subject? <laughs> you know, I'm trying to yeah, move forward with this a little bit. Um, 
are are they all still around that they see the progression of the car? Because like most people's cars, like yours, make small progressions over a little bit of time as well. You know that you're always yeah. Tinkering you know, they're never, they're with, never really finished. You know what's crazy is uh, once we got it done. I mean, I I think we put a emergency brake on it, uh, just little things, but. Um, I mean, once it hit the road, it hasn't really changed much. Oh wow! So, okay. So yeah, we've we've we we did it right inside and out. So. Um, Does it have yeah, some I, great big fat tires on the back end of it? No, no, no. Just regular regular Coker tires. You know. Okay, so so this is really a hot rotted look from the fifties as cool. well, which yes, you've got. Sir. Does it have wire wheels? Nope, just Sealy's. Sealy, yeah, 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 we'd love to see a picture yeah. of it, or if you wander us out into the garage or something, and Let's do it. Uh, awesome, be happy to do that as well. Okay, the, yeah, let's do that. Um, I see that there are other people there, so you, clearly you've had a party uh, planned for this Saturday morning with us. Danny Veriter's here with me. Oh, gotcha. so hey, he, Danny. So he dumped this off on you, and then he come over to watch you. Let's see if I can do this <laughs> better. Let Danny yeah. hold it. Yeah. Oh, how cool is that? <laughs> yeah, Let me to work. Okay, so that's right. Um, that's hard for. Him. Oh my <laughs> God, I love that. Yeah, I do too. Yeah, that is extremely. Uh, I would say more period correct for the uh, the Perfect. early sixties. Dog dish yeah, covers, yeah. nice. Don't know if they can see. Yeah. Yeah, we can see. Nice. Okay. Yeah, so, so I have to ask, does it have air conditioning in it? No. <laughs> no. Once again, it was one of those things where I just wanted it to be uh, as simple as possible. So I didn't want to put AC heat. You know, I just nothing's going to go wrong with it kind of thing. Got it. And, you know, we uh, sprayed the inside, you know, with the heat and sound barrier. Yeah. It's It's been great. I mean, we... You know, driving it out as long as I leave the windows up, it's fine. I mean, um, and you know, even in the summertime, um, it doesn't get too hot. So, uh, just like trying to sit in traffic, of course, but um, otherwise, yeah, I, mean, I really have a really look, look at the headers. So, so I was gonna say, I really like your, your your exhaust system that uh, that that looks so cool. Now, is that something you guys built or is that something you guys bought? The headers, um, yeah, that's something we bought. Uh, the exhaust, um. When I first got it, that was one of the things we added on later was uh, I extended it out because, of course, you know, it was coming out here, but it was just so loud that when you're sitting in the car, you, you can't talk to another person right. in the car. You can't, you know, one of those things. So, so, and then plus the exhaust is going right up in your face. So I finally you know, ended up exhausting it out, but left it where I could um, leave it on there. So well, that's cool. Was there any consideration of making the doors a suicide opening or just traditional? Just traditional, yeah. I was trying to keep as much traditional as possible um, with it. I just kind of always like that look, you know, that Bonneville Lake, you know, look. Lake. Yeah. Does, does it have the straight front axle on it in the front, or yes. is it? Yes. Yes. So very, very. Yeah, 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 front. yeah. There you go. Yeah. We got the split split wishbones in the front, and then. You know. Very cool. Bars in the back. So um, let's let's go back to the engine. First of all, let's start with the transmission. So if you're doing 60, 70 miles an hour down the freeway, how many RPM is it running? Uh, maybe 3,000. Nice. I, mean, I, can, I, can, I, can, I can drive 80, take my hands off the steering wheel, and it's fine. That's I mean, it's, sweet. Uh, yeah. This can be, now, uh, did, did you do anything to the engine? Is it just a stock 350? It's, uh, you know, we uh, put a thumper cam in there. Um, other than that, I mean, we really didn't do 325. It's a 325 horsepower, so um, perfect. Well, again, yeah. that kind of doesn't keeps weigh it, anything. Yeah, no keep, weight keeps it, it from it, stressing it, it, out and creating its own problems mm -hmm. over time as well. Yeah, yeah. two thousand pounds. Yeah, it's like maybe two thousand pounds. Yeah. Is wow. it really? Holy cow! So that's a lot of horsepower. That's a lot of power <laughs> in that. <little> yeah. Car. <laughs> so what kind of what kind of chassis underneath it? Pretty it's, cheap. It's a it's a 32 chassis that was pinched for 3031, so it's a it's just a, like a Pete and Jake's chassis. Um, so, but it, you know, it looks like it's 432, but uh, it's just been modified to fit a 31. So, uh, it's got a Ford uh, nine-inch rear end. 
Of course. Um, and then the, uh, the, the gauge for the um, speedometer, since we put, had to make the T5 work differently, um, I had to go with the GPS. Um, speedometer. Yeah. So yeah. It's, it's like the most modern part about it is that it's the, the gauge is GPS. And so... Okay, hey, but it does its job, you know. That's that's the yeah. point of it is you just need it to, and probably looks relatively nostalgic, uh, just with oh, the yeah, yeah. the it's electronic a, speed. It's a forty Ford um, plus gauge cluster, so it yeah. Beautiful car. How long did it take you guys to build that car? I think it was one of those things. It was like based off of money, you know. It's like we'd build it for a while, and then we had to you know wait a while for some more money to come in, kind of thing. Um, so. Uh, it was like two years, um, but uh, but yeah, it would if realistically you looked at it because you know we're working on the weekends when we can kind of stuff. So um, it probably only it didn't take very long um, if you look at it. Maybe it was, probably built in in two months. Yeah, I mean, yeah, just a couple months. And what, honestly, what took the longest was the body work. You know, just fix. You know, cut the because we had to cut all the sheet metal out of the bottom, rewold all that in, um, and then just do all the, you know. So it's a, it's a steel body. It's a steel body. Yes. Yeah. The original. And where, yeah, where did you find the body? Um, found, found actually, uh, you know, how sheet metal, um, in Beaumont, he's the one that, um, sells the, the pieces that you, you know, to fix the scars, the no. patches. Um, we went, uh, Billy and I went there to just check it out and, um, he actually had one for sale and he had a customer that, uh, had passed away and he sold it to us for, um, whatever. Yeah. How yeah, cool yeah. is that? How cool is that? Yeah. It's awful quiet. Yeah, it's great. not running. I was just wondering, maybe fire it up. Yeah. <laughs> and he, you got the keys handy. I do. You want me to turn it on? Yeah. yeah let's, uh, let's light talking. it up and listen to it. The, uh, you know, we're all, we're all car fans. So, uh, open the garage. So looking at something f- like that's kind of cool. I don't know if I'd open it. Well, it's fixated. Yeah. We have a lot of viewers. We don't want to. Yeah, we don't want to asphyxiate them while they're watching. <laughs> oh my God! Right, fire right up. What? What? <laughs> Dang, it sounds really good. Doesn't it? Yeah, it's got a nice lope to the cam without being excessive. That's that thumper cam. Yeah, that's why I say. Yeah, that's yeah. cool. Nice. Yeah, it's got a, it's got a real nice lope to the cam without being uh, too crazy, so you can tell it's got a little uh, Conrad, he turned a little it off. extra you power. You don't have to talk that loud. He turned it off. I know. <laughs> thumper cam. Yeah. So, what degree of the thumper cam is it? The uh, the full. I, I think they have three versions of the thumper. Yeah, and it's like a mother thumper. There's a yeah, yeah. I just got the basic one. The mother thumper is just a little too much lope. Is it? But you don't have to worry about vacuum because there's nothing vacuum operated on it. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So, um, okay. Well, I want to talk now a little bit about the club and the and the and 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 the. Uh, yeah, yeah. We're going to go inside. Okay, that's fine. Yeah, it's uh, a little warm. chilly in the garage. A little chilly out there. Got it. So um, I, I wanted to ask you about the uh, limitations when it comes to being a member of the Demons Car Club. Yeah. What are the requirements to join the club uh, okay. as far as the car or as far as uh, uh, the... Yeah, so um, we, we try to say pre-63 because um, a lot of the car shows that our club goes to uh, or usually um, the rules to go to that show are pre-63. Okay. So we prefer all our members to go with us everywhere we go. So um, so that's a big thing is that. And then, um, two is it's kind of like um, when we meet somebody and they're interested, it's like, you know, hang out with us for about six months, um, just get to know us, meet each other, the, the car shows or events or whatever, or just hang out. And if we get along, because, um, you know, and if, and if we can do some shots and not get in trouble, we're good. Hey, hey, hey. hey. Have fun. And, yeah. <laughs> All right. So, so uh, how, how many members are in the club? Right now we're sitting around 10. Um, uh, we kind of go up and down each year um, from right around 10 to 12 mm-hmm. every year. Um, we have another chapter in um, Louisiana. They have only about three members. And then we had one in uh, Las Vegas, but um, the 
the president of that chapter, he had to move to California for work. So uh, they went ahead to shut that one down. For I now. didn't think anybody moved to California for work. <laughs> I thought they moved away from California for work. You would think. Yeah. He's probably, he's probably regretting it now. <laughs> All right. So how did you get interested in uh, a car like the 31 Ford? Did you have something prior to the 31? No. Um, I've always had, like, uh, just 50s cars and um, – you know, like I had a 53 Buick, a 55 Oldsmobile, nice. uh, you know, just a bunch of those kind of cars. Um, I think it was just, you know, years ago, I was in a different car club and uh, it was back in, in Dallas, Fort Worth area. And I had a friend there. He had a, a 30 and uh, it, it was just a lot of fun. You know, they're like a big go-kart. So it was just, just get to drive as fast as you want you know what i mean and so it just they're just so much fun that uh, i was like i just do you still have the vehicles from the 50s you still got your oldsmobile and buick oh no it's kind of uh i had kids and so it's like oh somebody needs braces okay sell this car (laughs) let's sell the car so so joey can get braces and so he also went from a six thousand pound car to a two thousand pound car (laughs) Yeah, I'm sure it's double the horse power. Yeah, the, the, uh, much more uh, skilled at handling in, in these days. So, if uh, somebody like me mm-hmm. wanted, was really interested in something like what you have, I don't know as if I'd be brave enough to go at at this point in my life to uh, build one on my own. But I would be interested in maybe perhaps looking at something that somebody else had built that I could buy and kind of sit behind the seat and, you know, do my thing sure. without too much work. Do you know any guys that have that kind of situation? Yeah. I mean, like uh, Danny verander has got a um, 28. Uh, it's a sedan version uh, he's got for sale um, that, I mean, it runs great. I drove it to um, Austin not too long ago, and uh, it's a great little car. Um, but, yeah, yeah, it's easy to find. <laughs> And that's he's also got a '55 Buick. He's turning. Yep. yep. That that he's he's already sold it. I saw pictures of it though. But that is a nice car. My dad had a '55 Special. Yeah. Well, that's the beauty of of your car, though, Jeff. Is uh, even if it, let's say I was looking for a vehicle in that uh, in that genre, uh, the mm-hmm. simplicity of your build makes it easy to buy something like that because I don't have to be a computer whiz to understand oh, yeah. all of the electronics of an LS uh, equipped vehicle and the electronic yeah. transmission. That's why that's why the simplicity of your build makes such good sense, especially if I was looking to buy buy one used. Right. I mean, it's so so few wires. So few, I mean, it's so easy to, to work on. It's like if you got anything going on, it's, you know, fuel fire. You know what I mean? It's, it's real, real simple stuff. Well, great. Yeah. We really appreciate it. And if anybody wanted to uh, uh, become a hangaround with the demons, how could they go about uh, finding you guys? We're on the we're on Facebook. That's the best way to find us. Um, there's a Demons Car Club on Facebook. That's where you should go. All right. Well, <laughs> cool. Yeah. We'll uh, we'll find it and post it up on our site. And anybody who's uh, got a pre sixty three that might be interested, maybe they'll check you out. Jeff, we really appreciate you giving us the time and showing us Love your, your car too. Yeah, yeah, Sweet yeah. Stuff. Yeah. Appreciate it, guys. Thanks Thank so you. much. Thank, Thank you. Very you. Much. All right, uh, Jeff Light with the Demons Car Club. Time now for this hour's car review. Looking at a nineteen nineteen. Oh my God. Not quite. Uh, how about a 2021 Chevy Traverse? <laughs> Here are the uh, models. Uh, it comes in the L, the LS, the LT Cloth, the LT Leather, the RS, the Premier, and the High Country. Do you think they've got enough packages available yes. for that? Mm-hmm. I had the High Country, the top of the line. Uh, standard SUV, seats up up to eight people. Uh, most of the time, I think that uh, people are going for the seven-seat configuration because it's a whole lot easier to move about inside there unless you've got, you know, six kids or something. Uh, exterior changes from last model year, none, really. Uh, exterior features, conservatively modern design. Great selection of wheels on all of the different models that they have. And, you know, it's funny because if you take a, a, a vehicle and just have a regular nondescript version of the Chevy Traverse, and you put all of the different wheels on it, take a picture of it, you're going to go, oh, well, I like that one better than the other one. It's the same vehicle. Just the wheels are different. It's just the wheels are different, and it's all a mindset because you can get the cheapo 
you know, none of them really cheap, but the cheapo, smaller diameter wheel on it. And man, what it changes a, the look of it. It changes the entire look of it. The whole stagger of it. Okay. If you will. Hmm. Um, what I liked about it, universally good all over. Uh, what could use improvement? Uh, well, there's an update coming in 2022. So I'd imagine. It needs to be because this has kind of looked like this for a few years. Yes, yeah, quite a few years. Aren't uh, there other platforms for this as well? Yes, there are. We'll get to that. Uh, interior highlights, easy access for the second and third rows, uh, passive phone charger in the high country anyway, quality leather, including the dash pad, uh, well-groomed large infotainment screen that's easy to use, cargo trunk room is good as long as the third row seat isn't up, but you put the third row seat up and then it's get a little tight back there to bring the groceries home. But that's the nature that's, of this. Video. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, what I liked about it, uh, Chevy's conservative, useful design is what I put here. I thought that was kind of descriptive, don't you think? Mm -hmm. Use, well, useful is the purpose of this. This is, you know, a, as the Chevy version, it's the more utilitarian version. 3.6 liter, 310 horsepower, V6, 266 pound-feet of torque, nine-speed automatic transmission with a tow rating of up to 5,000 pounds. Not bad. You can tow the boat back there. 17 miles per gallon city is it's what its rating is. 25 highway for combined to 20. I got 22.3 miles per gallon, over 167. 7.6 miles. What I liked about it, plenty of power that matches well with the nine-speed automatic transmission. What could use improvement? Uh, you know, a Turbo 4 would be something that I think I would look into, and I would imagine that the next version may have that Turbo 4 nice. that's going around. And, of course, I would imagine that the new version, it might have already be in place for this one, uh, is electrification because GM is headed in that direction yes, with everything are. that they own. So uh, let's see what the 2022 model offers. Auto start-stop drives me nuts, and you can't turn it off. That's Oh, they don't have a defeat button on no. it? No, and okay. that's a deal breaker for me, but that's just me. And I thought to myself this week, so how do I describe that? Well, I am a two-foot driver. It doesn't make any difference whether it's an automatic or a manual transmission. I always drive with two feet. Do so you brake with your left foot? Correct, most of the time. Huh. Yeah, but I ambidextrous. I can do both. Oh, so you go both ways. They have a vaccine for there that. There you go. <laughs> well, I almost proved that, didn't I? You did. We're doing shots tonight. Shots. <laughs> a four-wheel drive is available on this. A refresh, as I mentioned, due in 2022. <laughs> well, you said four. It's all-wheel drive. Okay. I, it, just the difference. There, there is, is a difference. There is. There's, yeah. a, there's a significant the, difference, but yeah. So yeah, they they do offer it in all-wheel drive. Don't mind us. Base trim 531. It's not cheap. As tested 54 295. The base model price is thirty nine ninety five. It's not to bad. me. Yeah. That's a bargain. Yeah, that's a that's a real for bargain. that size. And that three is row. that is a large CUV. Well, By that's not that's not what the government calls it. Right. They but, call it a standard SUV. But it's it's a pretty good size. One of my daughters has one, and and she got it because of the teenagers. She wanted the room for the two boys that play football, and the daughter and friends. And she loves it. It's a couple of years old. She's got one I think is two years yeah, old. Yeah, but you but can fit an adult in the third row. Yes. yes. So thirty nine ninety five is the base. Ford Explorer, which matches up kind of along these lines, 36000 Kia Telluride starts at thirty nine three ninety, And the VW Atlas is $40,000. So with those in mind, it's a pretty good bargain, I mm -hmm. think. All right. Well, that's that. Uh, let's check in on the cruise-in calendar, which is, you know, a big one tomorrow. But I don't know if that's going to happen or not. Well, I, th I think that's going to be a little weird with all the weather. You know, uh, tonight is a teriyaki and cars at a uh, seventy. I saw that seventy-two oh six Bissonette, which sounds like that could be kind of a fun little place to fun little cruise to go. That's at four p.m. to eight p.m. eight thirty p.m. And then uh, uh, also uh, the Bowl Fo uh, car meet at Katy. I know. Fa, not fa, fa. I say fa. I'm sorry, fa. Uh, car meet out in Katy again. That's four thirty to nine. How do you spell that? P H O. Oh, fa. Fa. No. Is P H A it, is fa. Is it fa? Fa. Okay, whatever. V five fo fa. 
You, you can meeny, send your money, comments money. to info at inwheeltime.com. No, and don't then, bother. And then typically, <laughs> you know, the Kim, the Kima car meet, that's always Saturday nights yep. at 6. And that's good, good steady meet to go to. There's always lots of different people there. Uh, and I know uh, that we have quite a few people that uh, are friends of the show go to that with some regularity. Tomorrow at 8 a.m. is Lucky's. Uh, rod run up in College Station, depending on the weather, and that may kind of ruin it for a lot of people because if the weather is too bad and it's icy and frosty and and uh, wet outside, a lot of folks won't go. Snowy. You know, I imagine as you get that far north, it very well may be snowy. I don't. Hopefully, it's not snowy in Houston. If it is, everybody in town who owns a body shop is going to have a big smile on their face. Yeah, be planning vacations. You know, and then uh, of course uh, every uh, Sunday night is. Uh, 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 Freddie Steakburger up on Eldridge in 1960. And then Wednesday night is uh, Freddie Steakburger out in Katy. And Friday night is St- Freddie Steakburger at uh, Kirkendall in 2920. Hey, I'd like to remind everybody that the In Wheel Time Car Show streams on Facebook, YouTube, and InWheelTime.com. Podcasts are available on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher Radio, iHeart Podcast. Tune in. Google Podcasts, Pandora, Amazon, and Podcast Addict. <coughs> That's a lot. You get them all out? I think. In Wheel Time Car Show continues right after this quick break. Do you know what teens just love? Not, not being told your what you're supposed to love. That's not anyone's business but yours. It doesn't matter what you love, but if you love it, click it. That includes you too. Because in 2018, 42% of Texas teens who died in traffic crashes were not wearing their seatbelts. Make sure everyone is buckled up. Every rider, every ride. Brought to you by the Texas Department of Transportation. Texas Truck Works is your go-to truck customizer. From mild-to-wild lift kits, custom wheels and steering and handling enhancements, to the best personal and commercial wraps, Texas Truck Works delivers. Let Texas Truck Works founder Scott Stevens help you get the most out of your truck or Jeep. Texas Truck Works has decades of customizing experience, including power adders and complete engine swaps. Let the Texas Truck Works team design an upgrade plan that fits your budget. Get truck attitude today at TexasTruckWorks.com. Tailpipes and Tacos is Houston's premier cruise-in, and you're invited to join in. Whether you're a cruiser or a spectator, Tailpipes and Tacos is the place to enjoy made-to-order breakfast tacos, fresh coffee, and mingle with Houston's fun car people. Mark your calendar for Saturday, January 16th for Tailpipes and Tacos at the Loopy Tortilla Mexican Restaurant in Katy, 8 a.m. to 11 a.m. Tailpipes and Tacos is free, and everyone is invited. You'll see collector cars, hot rods, customs, magnificent originals, and resto mods all in one location. Cars from all over Southeast Texas cruise in and show off in a friends and family event. The Loopy Tortilla Mexican Restaurant on the Grand Parkway at Kingsland Boulevard, just south of I-10 and Katy. Drag racer, car enthusiast, and Loopy founder Stan Holt brings you Houston's hottest cruise in, Tailpipes and Tacos, Saturday, January 16th, 8 to 11 a.m. at Loopy's and Katy. The In Wheel Time Car Show will be there, too. Get your ride ready, and we'll see you at the Tailpipes and Tacos Saturday morning cruise in, January 16th, 8 to 11 a.m. at Loopy's and Katy, weather permitting. 